home crowd team and the home crowd. So that's going to be one more challenge to add to this. This to is make. the Cowboys home gym, the Legacy Center in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So this is a road game for the top seeded Islanders here today. To Lazarus Keys gets the tip. And a and Corpus Christi with the ball first. We are underway. Our second semifinal, New Orleans and Northwestern State. Winner of that one, of course, gets the winner of this one here today off the Louisiana Gulf Coast. Isaac Mishila posting up on Shumi. Can't win the battle. And the rebound into the hands of Jonathan Massey. Massey playing the point in for the injured Trey English, who tore his ACL just two weeks ago. Massey with good size at 6'6". And leads the team among active players in assists. Zach Scott calls for the walk. Well, you know, keep your eyes on the Islanders' defense, David. They they really do a good job. You know, they can go out there and they can press you and they can turn you over. Corbis is starting five. We've mentioned the trio of Tennyson, Mushila, and Murdix already. Jalen Jackson hoping for his third NCAA tournament. Went to the big dance at North Texas. Before transferring to Corpus, Islanders are the defending tournament champs. And Zach Scott, like Christian Schumann, is at a hot tournament. 22 points, 5 steals in the win over Nichols yesterday to get the Cowboys to the semifinals. Murdix lost the ball off his hand, and the Islanders turn it back over. That was some solid defense from McNeese. But, you know, you, you really, you got to admire what Steve Lutz has done. I, I mean, you know, back-to-back. A championship. I mean, he's ready to get the championship. He went to the NCAA last year. That's a pretty good accomplishment. And he speaks of his team's experience because they have just about everyone back from last year's team that won the Southland tournament. He says, our guys know what's ahead of them. Different path to the tournament title last season. They were the four seed and just seven and seven in league play before winning three games in three days to move on to the big dance. Under 10 to shoot. Massey pulls up. Here comes Jackson for the Islanders. Racing down the floor. It's pulled down by Scott in a foul. Uh, you see, you know, you see how tough they are to guard in transition because they play good defense, but they put points on the board, David. Look at their point production. First in their league in points scored, and they get to the foul line. And by the way, they make free throws. They don't just get there. Number one in both categories. That's 79% for the line. Is fifth in the nation. You see just under 81 points a game. And in Southland play, they're even better than that. Still looking for the game's first points. Tennyson spins and gets fouled. Uh, keep your eyes on that stat, David. We talked with Coach Lutz this morning and shoot around but you know I, I really I admire how easily not easily but how much of an effort he puts on getting his team to the line because you're not going to shoot it every night and he gets it if this team there. Zach Scott has just picked up his second foul. We'll mention again this is a McNeese team really just playing seven players and Shumate and Scott have easily been their best two scorers now Scott must come out. Yeah and that's key because you know I think at this point in the season, fatigue's not going to be as much of an issue, but foul trouble is. So you've got to go to your bench, but what bench? They've got two guys, and that's it. They're just down to seven scholarship players. A just amazing job, obviously, that John Aiken has done with his team. First two points of the game to Tennyson. Donovan O'Day has checked in for McNeese for Scott. Get the game-winning free throw to knock off Texas A&M Commerce in the first round two days ago. Jimmy lost it off his foot. Murdix moves on all day. Tip by Shoemate out of bounds, but it's Murdix who touches it last. Now keep your eyes again. Uh, you know, keep keep your eyes again on on the defensive prowess of of the Islanders. They they really get credit for their offense, but their defense is really top notch. And so Scott and Shoemate, you see, in their two wins leading into today's semifinal, well over half the team's points, hitting well over 50 percent from the floor. They just seem to have a guy and a half on the ball at all times, David. Just tough, tough defense. No, does not make it easy for you to score. And there's, <laughs> and there's a charge, as we mentioned. It. No. Well, they call the block well, on Jalen Jackson. I had, I had it a little different, but what do I know? I'm a, I'm a, a few more feet away, but I, I guess the, the point is they, they're really playing great defense. They're around the ball at all times. 
John Aiken says, I like being the visitor on my own gym. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and how McNeese made the tournament. I mean, again, they're the first eight seed to make it to the semis. But they had lost three straight going into the regular season finale against the University of New Orleans. And were down 13 of the half. They came back to win by seven. But they also needed Lamar and Incarnate Word to lose on the regular season's final day. And they did. So if none of that happens, McNeese is not here. No, and he pointed to the sky this morning, David. He... He said, look, I, we had a little help, and he acknowledged that. After the Harwin Francois, three. Good feed by Murdix down low for DeLazarus Keys for two. Well, I like the Islanders. They're going to try to extend the pressure every opportunity just to try to wear this team down uh, if they can. McNeese just trying to get that edge, and, and you can see their defensive prowess again. It's Murdix picking up the steal, who finds Keys. Second chance as he's rewarded Keys for the steal before. Well, McNeese can't do one thing, David. They can't turn it over. You can miss shots, but if you turn it over, I really think the Islanders will convert, and that will hurt them. Three turnovers so far for the Cowboys. O'Day drives. Able to save. Somehow got it to Massey, who finds Shoemate with under 10 on the shot clock. Does Massey see it? They say he got it off in time. And it's off Mushila out of bounds. Well, fortunate. Fortunate there. But look, David, look at the defense we talked about. Uh, how active they are with their hands in the passing lanes. They contest everything. Lead passes, post entries, moves in the paint. They'll have a man and a half to the ball at all times. Fresh 20 for McNeese. Just one field goal so far for the Cowboys. She made in and out. McNeese one of four from the floor. Mishila posting up on Shoemate. Shoemate takes it away. Massey drives. Lays it in. Well, that's an aggressive team. Coach Aiken talked to us this morning about how aggressive his team has been and how it's important for them to continue to attack the glass. Just four points yesterday for Massey against Nichols. John Aiken expects a better offensive game from him today. Oh, wild shot. How did Murdix get that to go? I didn't see it either, but he found a way to get it up off the glass and score it. Uh, again, though, you know, the Islanders are, they'll, they'll, they'll score, but they really dig in defensively. It's up to the McNeese to try to continue to get quality shots. For the tie, Francois. Ross Williams off the bench, just at five foot ten, grabs the defensive rebound. So Corpus has prevented the hot start from McNeese in front of their home fans. Cowboys got off to a quick start, and the win over Nichols yesterday, led by nine at the break. Eric Rumbush says, still Islander basketball. A berth in the Southland Championship game on the line. With, with me in, in Houston, my daughter born when I was at Rice, yeah. you were there, but uh, I don't know that I've ever had that kind of interaction on the on the court. Not 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 yet. Now I take them with me when we do games. It's different. They're my right hand statisticians. Eight five Texas A and M Corpus Christi lead, top seed in this year's tournament in the Southland. Keys to the rim, and Massey might have gotten a piece of it. Well, I still like out of the timeout. Where do they go? Right to the basket. They've scored already six points in the paint. They're not done. They're going to continue to attack the glass. We talked about the Islanders being the best in the league offensively. They also have the best scoring margin in the Southland and the best defensive efficiency in conference games. Shoemate gets his first two. Well, that's what I like about Shoemate. You know what he does? David Christian Shoemate just stays with it. You know, he might get a shot block. He doesn't care. He goes up, gets the rebound, and put back, puts it back. He's just aggressive. Williams for three off the mark. Shoemate, five straight double doubles and double doubles in nine of his last 11. And with Zach Scott on the bench with two fouls, they may need similar production from who John Aiken calls the best player in the league tonight. Six minutes in, one point Cowboys deficit. Scott is on the floor with those two fouls and call for the travel. Well, again, I don't know if you don't call that a forced turnover, but, you know, you start thinking about the defense. You start hurting yourself if you're playing against the Islanders. And that's what good defensive teams do, David. They don't. They may not block a shot, but they might affect your shot. Uh, you know, they may not steal, but, you, but you're going to end up playing faster than you'd like. 
So we mentioned that McNeese only goes seven deep, but what are your thoughts on John Aiken bringing in Zach Scott so early with those two fouls? You know, I think he just decided they've had a six-day layoff. He wants his player to be in rhythm. I like it, to be honest. you gotta, you got to trust your players a little bit. Jackson pulls up. Can't get the roll. And DeAndre Thomas, the rebound. Both teams under 40% from the floor so far. Massey, news on Williams. Feet inside, slam dunk Thomas. Well, how about the look from Massey? That was just an excellent isolation. A double team on their way, and they found this cutting teammate for the for the dunk. Great individual play. Yeah, Massey was not the starting point guard until two weeks ago when Trey English tore his ACL. English over 100 assists on the year. Offensive struggles continue for the Islanders. Here comes Scott. Shoemate fouled. Uh, yeah, here, here again, if you look at this, David, uh, the, how the dunk materializes, but you have the post up. You see there's about a man and a half, and everybody's watching. All eyes are on the on the ball handler. All, all eyes are on the post up, but you have to maintain contact. What's the best thing to do when your, your man leaves to help? Cut behind the defense. Hard to pivot and see both. Drop the level of the ball. Coming up over on ESPN and the app, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Matchup number three of the year, Gonzaga-St. Mary's West Coast Conference Championship game. It's in Las Vegas, again, on ESPN and the app. Gonzaga's won eight straight since losing at St. Mary's February the 4th, and that includes a win over St. Mary's at home under two weeks ago. Who never, wins that one? Never get tired of that matchup. Known both coaches, competed against both coaches, and honestly, that's just a great, uh, now turning out to be a great rivalry in, in the country in, in, in college basketball. Mark Few, Randy Bennett, their teams yet again at the top of the WCC. So there is Trey English. That tore his ACL two weeks ago. In fact, just before McNeese went on a road trip to Houston Christian and lost. Remember, McNeese had to get a lot of luck to just make the tournament. English 11 points a game in addition to over 100 assists on the year. Well, speaking about a little luck, that was <laughs> not sure the bank was open here in Lake Charles this late, but it was it was right now that was Tennyson with the three <laughs> to tie things up Francois Charging call hey, They've got to be careful David, you know, you don't want to pick up extra fouls as you mentioned earlier getting in foul trouble that's the one area you just don't have an answer for. You can play through fatigue, you can play through maybe a couple guys playing some more minutes, but you you know can't beat the foul game. If, if you got guys in foul trouble, that's hard. Francois called for his first, and that's already the fifth turnover for John Aiken's Cowboys. You talk about McNeese just playing seven third game in three days. You think that's a disadvantage, but how much of a disadvantage could it be for a team like Corpus playing their first game here on the conference's biggest stage with a lot more pressure on them? Yeah, you know, I, I, I never liked really long layoffs. Think about it. They're off six days. You're not off six days the whole year, not once. So this is foreign territory. Tennyson wants another three. Should have called Bank. <laughs> yeah, shot it short. He would have shot it long. He would have made it. Three from the corner. Scott. O'Day the rebound. Murdoch's got his hand on the ball. No foul on the contact. Terry Sitton says Islander basketball. And John Aiken thought the whistle should have blown for a foul. Well, we wondered if the banks are open here in Lake Charles. And they are. There's no quit down. They had to make some changes. And what did they do? They changed the way they play, David. They they now pound the glass. They have to get extra possessions. They have an inside presence. Yeah, Shoemate was playing a four. He has them out there playing pick and pop. They're really aggressive to the glass, and that's been a big, big reason why they've won some games. Cowboys plus seven on the boards. Islanders coming in, leading the conference in rebounding margin. Mishila works on the smaller O'Day and still off the board. I think that McNeese doing a good job holding their ground there. They're still, Islanders still trying to go into the paint. Draw fouls. Offensive foul. Danny Chance calls the foul on Massey for pushing off his first. Well, normally, you know, you can live through an offensive foul here and there. 
uh, or even a crash over the back, but these start adding up and it puts the Islanders in the bonus. That's just a kind of an arm hook. That was the right call. You, you want to make sure those go both ways. I'm sure the coaches are mentioning that to the officials in a polite way. Uh, but, you know, a foul's a foul, whether it's in the first minute of the game or the last. Corpus has missed six of its last seven, and they're four for 14 overall so far. Under 10 to shoot. Keys spins on Shoemaker. Jackson drives off the glass. Well, I love that move. You know, they're they're able to get the ball in a kick out and score. We talked to Coach Lutz about that. They've got the ability to drive it because of their inside presence. You can you can space the floor a lot more driving angles. Whistle off the ball on the Islanders. You know, David, if you're the Islanders, you've got to, you know, you're playing against them. You're going to have to find ways to drive. They just get out and deny leads. They deny one pass away. So that, that pass is not available. So you're going to have to put the ball on the deck and get to the rim. It's just something you're going to have to do. But then the Islanders do a good job of closing down on you. So you're going to have to make the next play. Simeon Fryer call for the foul. He comes out, member of the all-tournament team last year when Corpus won three games in three days to make it to the NCAA tournament. Shumi. Good defense. Key staying in front of him. Leads to the long pass. And instead of going for the over and back, Williams comes up with it and lays it in. Yeah, that's normally a play where you, you commit the foul, stop it, stop the ball, ball out of bounds. But if you're, you're McNeese, you can't afford that foul. So you have to let it go and, and give up the two. Ross Williams transferred from Division II Colorado Christian, averaging 10 points a game. Off the bench to support Tennyson. Massey drives. Keys the rebound. This is the Islanders' biggest lead in the of the basketball. Murdix gets to the rim. Gets the roll. Timeout, McNeese. A 9 nothing run to put Murdix's Islanders up six. Well, I love what the Islanders are doing. They're keeping the pressure on. They're getting to the rim at will. Seven McNeese turnovers leading to six Corpus Christi points, which is their lead so far. And three of those turnovers for the Cowboys coming in this 9 nothing A&M Corpus Christi run. Well, the Islanders also, you know, they get nine steals a game. How good is that? That's 15th in the country. That's not good. That's really good. And so, you know, you're, you're, if you're playing against them, you're, you're a little bit weary with the ball because you know they've got some pretty quick hands. Third game in three days for McNeese. First game of the tournament for Corpus. Top two seeds get a double bye to the semis. The two seed Northwestern State will take on New Orleans in our second semifinal later. Murnick's got his hand on the ball and wrestled it away from Massey. Finds Williams in the corner for three. Got it! Now we said good defense, this is a good offense. How about the hands, the quick hands, we had just talked about it. And the hands come up with the steal, the kick ahead, and the easy three in transition. After the slow Corpus start, they are in a rhythm. 12 straight points now. Shoemate gets to the rim and the flush. Well, there's really no play call for that, but if, if they want to duplicate that, I think John Aiken will be very happy. They've got to get the ball in Christian Shoemate's hands as often as possible. Look at the numbers already. Six points, five rebounds for Shoemate, but his team will need much more. Islanders have made their last four shots. Under 10 to shoot. Owen Deese for three. Foul on the rebound attempt. And it'll be on the Cowboys. Well, that, that's interesting. I, I, John Aiken at first thought it would be on Keys. Instead, they get Jonathan Massey for a second foul. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, but, you know, so many times, David, we fans, the commentators, we see play number two. We don't see the initial. Here's the block out, and there's kind of a hold down. I, I, I can see the official. Maybe a late call on that one. Fade away Tennyson. Right there, Mushila. Still off the scoreboard. But his team up seven. Here comes Zach Scott for the McNeese Cowboys. Oh, they're battling, David. There's, there's no quit in this McNeese team. They're just battling every possession. She made already a good start. Working on Mushila. Scott for three. 
Cowboys one of four from beyond the arc so far. Tennyson behind the back gets by Francois. Oh, with the left hand, able to get it off the glass and in. Hey, that's a beautiful shot. That was just a change of direction, change of hands. You go with the off hand quietly and gets it off the glass. Great poise. Tennyson with seven. Team's leading scorer coming in. Shoemate. Scott retrieves it. Foul down low. Uh, Christian Shoemate remains active on both ends, but right now the story is the top seeded Islanders up nine. But Ross Williams decides, hey, I'm going to have to do tournaments at Cal and at Eastern Michigan. How nervous were you heading up to Selection Sunday, even if you knew with your Eastern Michigan team that you were getting an auto bid? Well, you know, we didn't really necessarily, uh, we're going to get that bid, David, so nervous is not the word. We were, we, you know, oh, that, that was an interesting inbound. I'll get back to that in a second. Ross Williams just took the inbounds pass away and another McNeese turnover with the top seed in and Corpus Christi up nine. Owen Deese finds Williams. And as usual, the Islanders patient. Just one turnover so far. Jackson pulls up. Well, yeah, we'll get back here in a second. David, you're never relaxed as a coach. You never know you're getting in the tournament. Things can happen. You just want to punch your way in, and so you play your way in. That's what you're. That's what you're. You're, you know, you're supposed to do. So if you're hoping for an at-large berth, you can't wait for Selection no. Sunday to be over. Uh, we never did. No <laughs> way. Nice move. That's. And, and they, we said that Chris Shoemate's got to have the, the, the ball in his hands, and I'm sure that John Aiken and his staff said, "Look, let's let's give Christian some looks because you can make your offense ro go around him." But David, you know, when, when you're when you're talking a little little heated, that's going to happen. And, uh, but when you're when you're trying to get in the tournament, uh, you, you you must focus on your goal. And you don't relax if you leave it to a committee or to points. Now NET, NET rankings, and at the time we had RPI. You know how many points you beat other teams by road versus too many factors. You just the old-fashioned ways. You get in, you win, you advance. So you want to continue to do that. It's a little harder at mid-major because you have to almost win out. And well, that's the pressure of these types of tournaments. And you've been in both. You've coached in one bid league. She coached with Cal in the Pac-12, back then the Pac-10 when it was a multi-bid league. So much pressure in these types of tournaments. You know, I've been in the league where they took seven or eight uh, you know, teams in our conference and, and in the Mid-American Conference, they took one and there were some awfully good teams that didn't get in. The years they didn't win it. Christian Shoemates two free throws has McNeese within seven and then a foul on O'Day. But John Aiken is applauding his guys. He feels that the game is being called a little bit too closely for his liking on the defensive end. Thought his guys had some pretty good hands. The Cowboys really only going seven deep. They have two players with two fouls. Zach Scott and Jonathan Massey, who both average in double figures. And here's DeLazarus Keyes, who's been playing his best basketball as of late. Double figures in two of his last four after he just scored in double figures in one game prior. Also second on the team in rebounds, Jelicek Nishila, who leads the South London boards. Well, I like the, the, the versatility. You know, you've got some seniors. You don't see that in college basketball a lot <laughs> anymore. But look at this team that Steve Lutz has built, and he's got veteran guys up and down. Well, they had 10 transfers last season, the most in Division One, and they all meshed together at the right time, winning the league, and just about everyone's back. Now, that, again, that's a credit to his staff. And to coach Lutz because that's important. You build team. You want the players who want to be there. I'm sure, they spend a few of their team building days on the beach. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Islanders. That's literal. The campus is on an island. But Shoemate <laughs> continues to roll. Can his teammates help him out? Well, that's what's got to happen. He's got to have his hands on the ball. Dees for three. Shoemate with ten of the Cowboys, seventeen points. Could get a double double in this half. He has five straight coming in. Uh, you can see it's almost a touch per possession early on the clock. I like the strategy. Doubled. Finds O'Day for three. Foul on the rebound. And Deese will pick this up. Yeah, David, if you if the ball is in Christian Shoemate's hands, it's causing the Islanders having to make an adjustment. You know, you're not going to guard Shoemate one on one very, very well. So he's able to find his teammates. Now his teammates have to make either uh, penetrating drives or they're going to have to knock down some shots. But, uh, you know, the, the uh, McNeese Cowboys are hanging tough. They're playing and they're competing as they have been throughout this tournament. Last two nights, Christian Shu made 75 minutes. And he continues his great play so far today. 
Islanders win it over and back. She made a lie to keep the basketball. Spun, but saw Keyes in front of him, and Keyes knocks it out. Well, there's the quick hands we talked about the Islanders. You know, you're going to make one move. You might get by your defender, but you can't relax. But, I, again, I like Kristen Shoemate. I like the fact that he's trying to isolate. He's a hard player. He's a player that mismatches you. You know, he's a little undersized, but he, he really give big guys the business because you can't stay with him. And if you've got a smaller guy, he knows where to go. He goes right to the block. John Aiken calls Christian Shoemate best player in the Southland and said after the win over Nichols yesterday, we are all super prepared. His words to play for as long as it takes. Well, those are big compliments, but you know what? I, I, if if you, you coach Christian Shoemate, I can see why you're saying that. Team leader in points, rebounds, boards, and of course you mentioned all the double doubles. Nine to shoot. To feed. And McNeese gets it back to purpose. Well, there you go. There's there's the Islanders again, just denying a simple out of bounds under. They make nothing easy for you. Nothing. Turnovers are ten to one. Yeah, that's not gonna bode well, and and that's an adjustment that John Aiken's gonna have to make with his team at halftime. Keys with position lays it in. But that's that's again where if you're Corpus Christi, where you're getting your bread bread buttered, you've got now 16 points in the paint or make it 18. They're really pounding McNeese inside. And with Isaac Mishila scoreless, their best post player, it's Keys with eight so far. Yeah, they've got a number of weapons. It's not just Mishila. Usually it is, but they've got a number of guys that can beat you that. Under five to go, first half in our first semifinal. Scott can't get the roll. Murdix gets to the rim, finds Mushila. Two and a foul. He must have heard you, David, <laughs> because you're not going to deny him for long. He's just their guy that just knows, knows how to get to the line. He's done it for his whole career, but he, he, he's not afraid of contact. You can see the penetration, the drop off, and he's just as strong. He's, he's a great and one guy. I mean, he's, he's been this way his whole career. First trip to the line today, but coming in gets to the line more than any other player in the Southland Conference and hits 84% of his shots from the strike. But David, he's been there almost 200 times. I mean, who does that? He's you know, I, I love coaching a player like that because he's not afraid. He's the, the glamour and the glitz. He, he just he's working like brings his lunch pail and he goes to work. 11 turnovers now. How much is fatigue and how much is this Corpus defense as Murdix drives? And McNeese with the ball. Actually, they give it back. But back to my question how much of those 11 turnovers, McNeese fatigue versus this Islander defense? Uh, a little of both. You know, you can't say enough about the Islanders defense. But, you know, McNeese battling. They're hanging tough. But it's the Islanders who are giving us all. We'll be heading to Selection Sunday. Well, I can't get enough of what Houston's done, David. I've known Kelvin Sampson a long time. I, I still don't get, think he gets the credit he deserved. Uh, their team plays relentlessly. They're not the biggest team. They're not always the strongest team, but they just beat you. They find ways to win. Coach against Kelvin at Washington State, Oklahoma. In the NCAA, I mean, you know, he his teams and, and really know how to play and they compete. That's just number one. They compete. Very likely Houston a one seed when the brackets are announced on Sunday. They'll get going in the American Conference Tournament in Fort Worth in a couple of days. Tennyson gets to the rim and he is quietly up to nine. This is the Islanders' biggest lead. Well, I really like what he's done. He's he's able to step through. He's a fundamental player. Tough shot, Massey off the glass and in, but most of these field goal tries for McNeese, quite tough. Well, if you're McNeese, you can't exchange baskets, David. you got to get some stops. This is not going to get it. You've got to get out there. You're, and you asked me about fatigue before we went to the break. You can see that's a little fatigue, not getting out to the three-point line and, and giving up an uncontested three, and the Islanders know what to do. Murdix buries the triple lead is 15 Francois looking for the answer in an air ball Yeah, and again, you know what it's understandable. You're not going to rely on this But fatigue does have a factor, but you, you know, you don't want to give up in college basketball uncontested threes David nobody there I mean college basketball players hit 62% of their shots on average if they're uncontested 38 if they're contested So what do you do you contest? There's a reason why coaches say get your hand up play the percentages don't give up anything uncontested Murdix saves it to Mushila. 
Seven Islanders have scored. Mushila, what position? Shoemate wins the battle. Another rebound for Shoemate's his seventh to go along with ten points. Well, that's impressive defense right there. Trying to put the team on his back. Two more. They're going to need a lot more of that, David. If they can continue, and Shoemate can continue to go inside, they can keep McNeese, you know, within striking distance. Zach Scott is still scoreless after his 22-point performance in the Winnipeg Nichols yesterday. Beautiful backdoor to Tennyson, but the defense was there in a wild layup attempt. Here comes Massey. Bump by Tennyson. Well, they'll be free throws. Uh, uh, let's go back to Christian Shoemate and what he means to this Cowboy team. I mean, he's active. He's been a gamer. He's helped get him to this point. And how does he do it? He's just so, you know, he's so active, really. And, you know, anytime he can, he plays pretty solid defense, too. I mean, he's there. You know, he's, he's dependable. You want a guy like that on your team, but he's able to, you know, get you in the paint. Used uh, either hand, but he's got great balance. And he's just an all-purpose player. He's up to 62 points this tournament. And just under five halves of action. 64% from the floor coming into today. Massey misses the front end of the one and one and the deficit for the eight seed remains 13 McNeese first eight seed to ever get this far in the tournament all the way to the semis winning in the last two days Tennyson throws it away out of the reach of keys. You know, we talked about Calvin Sampson one more story John Aiken told us this this morning I said where do you coach where do you get all these offensive rebounds that you said I get that from Kelvin Sampson He has a term that he coined called tsunami. He said the tsunami doesn't stop. It keeps rolling by you We want to be like the tsunami. It's merciless it and, and, and I tell you they've taken a page out of Houston's book Well when you play Houston, you know what you're getting <laughs> yeah. and that is one of the most physical teams on the defensive end and on the boards as well I wish I knew that when I was playing them. I don't <laughs> know if there's anything we could have done about it Shoemate can't get the roll this time. Offensive rebound. Shumate the follow. And then Shumate got hit in the eye, and that's why the whistle blows. Yeah, he, he, took, it, he took a pretty good blow. Yeah, sorry, Coach. I don't think this is a foul, but Kerry Sitton does blow the whistle to make sure Shumate is okay, but add two more to his total. Right, but uh, just inadvertent from his own teammate, it happens. If you're John Aiken, are you thinking if my Cowboys can get to within 7-8 at the break, that's a victory? Yeah, I, I think, you know, they've come back on teams, so they know they can come back. And we'll tell that story a little bit later, but they've come back several times this, this year. So they just want to cut this thing maybe single digits. digits. Murdix hangs. Keys offensive board. Can't get the follow. Murdix. They have three chances. A fourth coming after Jackson retrieves the basketball. They just couldn't close down on the ball defensively. Murdix again, wild shot. Keyes grabs it. Four offensive boards in the possession. Murdix after the fifth offensive board. Long three, Tennyson. They had six chances, no points. Wow. Massey drives. He'll go to the line. Well, you talk about dodging a bullet, David. That basket, if the Islanders score, it puts them up. You know, that's now 13. That's going to give them a halftime lead of double digits. Now, on the other hand, you've got the Magnese Cowboys staving off with six offensive rebounds and, and not getting burned. And now they've got a chance to cut this thing closer and, and, and do what we just talked about. Cut it to single digits. Massey's their best free throw shooter at 83%. Freshman of the year in the Southland last season. First run the Southland semifinal ACC tournament beginning today with the first round. We take a look at the bracket. Georgia Tech, Boston College with wins. Virginia Tech, Notre Dame to follow. You know, Pitt could have won the ACC, but they lost their last two games, so they played Georgia Tech tomorrow. What about Duke? You know, they've won six straight, and very few are talking about them. That's uh, an example you, of the post Coach K era, but they may be the best team uh, in the league right better, now. You better. I had the luxury and, and just joy of going over and watching a Duke practice. Uh, to see John Shire, who I've known for a very long time, recruited him. What a job he's doing to step into Coach K's shoes, do what he's doing. And my goodness, he's done a phenomenal job at Duke. But uh, they're a tournament uh, uh, ready team. North Carolina's a tournament ready team. They've proven it. Uh, the league's always formidable. You, you better not go to sleep on the ACC. Is North Carolina Conference Tournament ready? Because they may have to win the ACC tournament to get into the Big Dance. Yes, or get to the final. But yeah. again, do you want to get there? I think they'd rather win it. Jalen Jackson off the glass and in, and the lead back up to 11. That's a huge basket. 
by the senior Jalen Jackson that they really needed that now It's McNeese who will play for the last shot seeing if they can get this thing under 10 before half Under 10 seconds Massey finds shoemate Double Massey pulls up yes the sophomore from Houston gets the Cowboys last four and McNeese is within single digits at the break well, I love Christian shoemate you know he's isolating you think he's going one on pass nothing comes easy and so that's what's kept them in this game and giving them the, the lead they're only shooting 35% but when you're playing the kind of defense they they do you don't have to shoot it a ton Nice within eight and with the ball to begin the second half. Jonathan Massey driving, have the last five of the half for the Cowboys. Misfires here, but DeAndre Thomas gets the offensive rebound. Zach Scott for three. Yes, his first points after 22 yesterday on the winner for Nichols. If he can get going, that'll support Christian Shoemate in this comeback effort. Well, I love, love the way they came out of the locker room. That's just what you want to do. Put the ball in your shooter's hands. Knock a shot down, now put some pressure on Corpus Christi. Now a 12-2 run going back to the end of the first half. Isaac Nishila is not on the floor to begin this half for Corpus. Simeon Fryer is and can't take the rebound away from Massey. Here come the Cowboys again. Massey, beautiful move to the rim. Deficit remains five. He did everything but put that. That would have brought the house down, David, if they knocked that shot down. Fryer, yes. So starting this half with Mushila out for the moment, the senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, gets his first two. Well, how calm was he just coming off a curl screen, a flex cut? Uh, really good action by Coach Lutz just to get a good looking shot, and he knocked that down. They needed that shot badly. Fryer on the old tournament team last season as Corpus won three in three days to go to the NCAA tournament. Zach Scott has hurt a finger, and that's why the whistles blow. Stop at your play early on in the second half. Well, officials doing a good job just making sure guys are okay, but, you know, if you're McNeese State, you cannot, you're McNeese, you cannot allow an injury to slow you down. There's no tomorrow. you got to play, and uh, they just hope he can recover. Christian Shoemaker got elbowed under the right eye in the first half. Now their second leading scorer, Scott, hurts a finger. Massey's trying to support them both. Misfires, and here comes Jalen Jackson. Racing down the floor, to the rim, scores. Well, you're on the other end, David. You can't just tip the ball. You've got to go out with two hands. If you tip the ball defensively, and you're playing against the Islanders, they're going to take it away. You've got to put two hands, secure defensive rebounds. I never like when players tip the ball offensively on the defensive glass. Okay on the offensive glass. Defensive glass, you got to grab it. Four in a row by the Islanders after the Cowboys got to within five. Massey short. Jackson racing down the floor again. And now the Islanders with numbers. Beautiful feed. Slam dunk keys. Six in a row for the top seeds. Now, if you're the Islanders, you love the energy. If you're McNeese, you again can't let your offense turn to, to, turn into bad defense or poor transition defense. You've got to get back in numbers. Christian Shoemate, 14 points, eight boards in the first half. Fouled as he tries to get a second chance. Keys picks this up. Well, let's t let's take a look at obviously if, if you're if you're the Islanders, you can see that they're just getting things done on the break. They really spread the floor. They run great lanes, and they come back with numbers. They really do a good job of creating numbers in, in transition. Shoemate gets the roll this time. Well, he was trying to get an end one, but he'll take the basket. There's there's where they've got to have the ball in Christian Shoemate's hands. Wild shot, Jackson. And it'll be McNeese ball. I don't think Steve Lutz liked that particular possession by his Islanders, but you know when you're playing great defense and you're and you're challenging as a coach You can let 
a couple of miscues offensively go because you just get it back with your defense and that's what's happened pretty much tonight for the Islanders. They've played really good pressure defense. We are told that Nushila is injured, leading rebounder in the league, and so that's why he is not playing right now for Corpus. Shime trying to keep the team in his back. Second chance. That counts! And one! Uh, you're Steve Lutz, you're watching your team now, and you don't like, again, the momentum going back to the home crowd team because they can turn this into a real positive. And it's Christian Shoemakes. There goes the guy of the hour. I mean, he just makes it happen again and again. The time of the year where players, especially on the mid-major level, can make names for themselves. Christian Shoemakes, six straight double-double, third straight this tournament. 16-27 Yeah, ago. David, he's done a double-double, and we just started the second half, mind you. So, uh, you know, we said that, at least I said, that he should have the ball in his hands as often as possible. I don't think he can get in there often enough. Murdix, they continue to be able to get it to the rim. Well, that's where they're going to go. They're not going to, there's no stopping the Islanders. They're going to take it to the basket. You're going to have to find ways to get stops if you want to win this game. You cannot outscore the Islanders. O'Day, yes. Freshman's first two. Up and down action. Keys off the Jackson miss. Owen Deese. Jackson can't get the tip. Fourth chance this possession leads the free throws. Great possession offensively on the glass. Love the action, David. It's, it's a good one. You've got the Islanders trying to hang on to their lead, but you got McNeese battling back. Within striking distance. The end two. Isaac Nushila is back for Corpus and on the bench with an eye injury. And hard to see there, but he has a bandage over his left eye. And now wearing a different number. He's wearing number 20 instead of his usual number 10. But still on the bench. And has the first free throw by Jalen Jackson off the mark. Well, we've seen Nushila and we've seen uh, Christian Shume take some pretty good blows this game. But... These guys compete, they're tough, and they will help their team. Corpus Christi looking for back-to-back -back Southland Championship appearances for the first time ever. Cowboys looking to get to the title game for the first time since 2012. Harlan Francois, pretty move. Too long, however, and Thomas, that's a foul before the shot. Well, I was just about to say that the Islanders are playing their patented great pressure defense, but it's again getting inside second opportunities You know McNeese has made a living going to the glass. They've really pounded the offensive glass this game Michelle now checks in and the foul Before the shot so a fresh 20 for McNeese. He was down 15 late in the first half. She made once two more another offensive rebound foul called however Thomas call for this one. Well, you, you you know again, you can see the effort on the offensive glass. That's what McNeese does. They've done a great job of pounding glass. So Ilan Mushila was born in Lubumbashi in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where his mom Marie Bamba still lives. These are pictures of her watching her son play on her laptop. She'll watch most of his games, which almost always start in the wee a.m. hours in the Congo. There's an eight-hour time difference, so the game started at 1:30 a.m. where Isaac Mishila's mom lives. How great that is that she can watch her son at any time on ESPN's family and networks. Well, hi to his mom. My, my mom used to watch our games with three hours difference. I thought that was a lot. But, you know, you're talking halfway around the world. So, uh, really heartwarming to see that, David. And what media, you know, what it can do now, the, the medium of, of uh, college basketball. That's awesome. Isaac says he talks to his mom every Sunday for hours, but her first questions are never about basketball. They're about his classes and his grades. I believe that, too. That's uh, that's special. Nine-point A&M purpose, Christy Lee. I know Marie Bomb is happy to see her son back on the floor. Zach Scott tied up by Jackson. That's a jump, and it'll be Corpus basketball. Yeah, you see how difficult it is. You think you've got a driving angle. Hard, the hardest thing to do in, college, in, in basketball, period, is defend on the basketball one-on-one -on -one with no help. And here he does that and then ties him up for a, 
for a jump ball. That's just one man-on-man -man pressure. Here it is. Look at this. And it just goes for the ball. It gets all ball, David. Great defense. It's the first Cowboys turnover this half. They had 11 in half number one. Murnix gets to the lane, lays it in. And he's done that a couple times today. He, tonight, he's really done a good job of finding seams and getting the rim. He's explosive, knows how to use the window. 13 for Murnix to lead Corpus. And you can see the double team every time that, that McNeese comes off screens. Francois misfires from three. Here comes Jackson again. He's quietly had a solid day. Seven points, six boards, three assists. Turns it over though this time and then commits the foul. <laughs> and Shupe pops right back up, says no harm, no foul. Well, I'll tell you, I, I got to make sure the football coaches anywhere don't see him play. <laughs> I, I've been in a couple schools where the coach would have had him somehow at their practices. I, we would have been fighting. He can play, he could play every play any sport he wants. He's so aggressive, tough. 67205. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, come on now. Look at he just takes a hit. <laughs> he rolls over, says no harm. Let's keep playing. Uh, you know, no drama with Christian Schumann. He just plays. And and uh, he's taken some licks this game. Day drives on Murdix. Keys cuts off Shoemate. Under five to shoot. Shoemate for three. Yeah, he kind of worked himself out of a good shooting range back out on the floor to a poor shooting range. Sometimes you got to take what the defense gives you. Williams for three. Mishila tips the ball to himself. Short. Continues his struggles offensively today, just three points. And the deficit for McNeese remains 11. Pretty crossover, Massey. He's fell. Hit the floor, hard two, but okay. This is physical on both ends of the floor. David, these teams, you know, they, they can feel it. They're, they're, there's no tomorrow, so you've got to be tough. There's no, 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 no sign here of backing down. But Zach Scott still with just three points. Massey continues to support his teammate, coming in averaging 10 points a game, and so far with nine. Trying to get his team within single digits, but misses the free throw. Big one on ESPN and the app, nine Eastern, six Pacific. Matchup number three. This happens almost every year, right? Gonzaga St. Mary's meeting for the West Coast Conference Championship. That's on ESPN again at 9 o'clock Eastern. They split the regular season series, both winning on their respective home floors. And title game yet again in Vegas. Well, I like the neutral floor. You know, you mentioned St Zach Scott, and, you know, he came off of 22 points against Nichols and five huge steals. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been a little quiet, but, uh, you know, that's part of the scouting, too. You you get somebody's attention when you have a monster game. Yeah, those five steals, a career high. Second chance for Murdix. Misfires this time. Another offensive board, this one by Fryer. Tennyson leans in. Well, again, the physical nature continues, and that's off Mushila out of bounds. No, nothing easy. You got to go out. There's no, you know, there's been very few clean rebounds. Everything's challenged. Both teams, by the way, pounding the offensive glass. You've got Corpus with 14 offensive uh, boards as well. So they're pounding the glass. They're giving McNeese their own medicine. Uh, but McNeese has struggled to get good looks against this Corpus team. Yeah, the defensive. 4 of 14 shooting this half. O'Day, an open three there, and it falls. So it's a rare open look this half for the Cowboys. And John Aiken calls timeout after he sees his team get it to within seven. Well, I like the timeout for a number of reasons. You get to rest, you enjoy the lead, and you talk. Nine o'clock Eastern time, that is on ESPN+. Plus. What a great story. Not just New Orleans. They lost nine in a row at one point and now have one six of seven to get to the semis. But Northwestern State, Corey Gibson, his first year as Demons head coach, over 20 wins and the player of the year in the league in DeMarcus Shirt. That should be a great matchup, but you mentioned these teams that have just haven't gone away. How remarkable is that to lose games of that magnitude and still come back and put a winning streak together of your own? 
This McNeese team needed to come back from 13 down in the regular season finale to defeat New Orleans and then needed luck. Lamar and Incarnate were both lost. All that had to happen for the Cowboys just to get here. And now they're in the semis. Under five to shoot. Terry on Murdick steps back, fires the three. Another offensive rebound, and Fryer connects. Well, you know, you talk about Mishila only having three points, David, but his presence is so so felt inside. He's got two, three guys on him. He gets three-point shot attempts for his teammates and then offensive rebounds. So you still have uh, people contributing even with, without getting their numbers statistically. Cowboys dominated the boards early, but the Islanders have responded. Now 17 offensive rebounds. Francois for three. Shoemate skies for the rebound, lays it in as he took it away from Mishila. That looks superhuman. He just skied over his his defender, his defender, and just found a way to score on the offensive glass. Now guards Mishila in the post and forces the pass out. Tennyson from long range. Yes. His second three in his 96th of the season. Uh, he's hit some big shots, and that's a huge shot because McNeese is knocking on the door, David. That was a much-needed shot. Tension increasing here on the home gym of McNeese. First of four straight years. The Southland will have its tournament here at the Legacy Center. Massey. Free throws coming up. Christian Shoemate, Travion Tennyson getting it done for their respective teams. Uh, watch to ends, you know, you don't want this to come down to a one or two possession game and, and, and then get stung. Yeah, it's felt two, three times. What do you think that Corpus is about to put McNeese at arm's length and the Cowboys have always had an answer? Well, you know, yeah, but by the same token, you've got Corpus Christi now that's answered every run. Every time McNeese makes a run, they, they've answered and that's what championship teams do. You know, they're, they're not going to make it easy. They know this is a, a, a tough team. They don't want it to get down to a one-possession game if they, they can help it. And then, they, you know, now they've got Isaac Mishila on the bench who's, you know, struggling a little bit, uh, apparently with an injury. Although is still a plus 11, as is Terry on Murdoch's, and nobody on the floor has a higher rating. A plus 11 means you're getting the job done for your team, even if you're not producing points. It's Isaac Mishila, who during the break, was at the end of the bench and being talked to by the Corpus training staff and obviously having trouble with that left eye injury. And we'll see if he comes back on the floor. He is now much closer to the coaching staff as Keyes lays it off the glass and continues his solid day. Well, I, I like that they're going back inside. That was a huge basket. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're going to have somebody step up in the, in the absence of Isaac Mishila. That's what good teams do. Your, your best guys go down and you know, your other guys step in and they produce. Yeah, that's this is tough, David. You can see, I, I think he's a little woozy. You know, you don't know if it's headaches or maybe it's team double vision, but he's not himself. There's no question, so they're giving him a break. Mishila just three points on one of six shooting today. Came in averaging 15 a game. But to your point, the Lazarus Keys has stepped up for him, almost a double double. Still McNeese ball with six on the shot clock. Well, they've got a short clock, and, you know, if you're McNeese, you've got to try to get a quality shot, and the Islanders have made nothing easy for him all night. Zach Scott fires a high arcing three. Keys, beautiful save to Tennyson. Here he comes. Now the Islanders with numbers. Tennyson to the rim himself, gets the roll. And that's what he does, David. He's so adept at getting out on the break and just scoring. Trevion Tennyson just shows you what he can do in an open floor. Very dangerous. How about Keys getting that started with the save? Massey throws it away and an over and back. Now we said, yeah, here, here's what we have. You know, David, you, you say, you know, when this happens, you can see what happens here. It's a, it's a save, and watch the break here. It just he does such a good job of looking off his defender and scoring it. I mean, that's that's just a great job in open court. Islanders have made their last four shots. I remember back in the day, if you had a three on one, you always dished it off. Now, so often, it seems like the player with the ball says, I can still score. Well, you, we always used to try to kick it ahead and, and create a two-on-one. A two-on-one actually is harder to defend than a three-on-one, believe it or not, because there's a lane line. If, you're, if you stay wider than the lane line, a defender cannot guard, two guys cannot, uh, one guy cannot guard two. Right. 
you keep the ball centered and one guy could stay in there maybe take a charge uh, and then buy you time until you fan the ball wide and guard it so but all's well that ends well for the Islanders you put the ball in Tennyson's hand and good things happen and Steve Lutz calls Travion Tennyson his hardest worker says he spends an enormous amount of time in the gym and deserves what he's accomplished 16 points a game to lead the squad and in Southland games coming in hitting 49% of his threes David when your best player is your hardest worker you've got something very special I've always said that Coming up on nine minutes to go. Ross Williams, three. And the eight seeds pull off a comeback. Down 12 with under nine to play. I'm going to answer that question. Yes, they can, and they have. Will they? I'm not sure, but they have done it this year numerous times. It's not going to help if the turnovers start to no. pile up again. It's now no. 14 turnovers for McNeese to just three for the top-seeded Islanders. No, and, you know, some of these are... are, are, are uh, Caused and forced others are not and the ones that really drive you crazy as a coach the unforced turnovers You know, there's really not a lot of pressure on you and that's really tough plus 13 and points off turnovers in a 12-point lead for Corpus Yeah, it's, it, it, it says it all But you love the effort of these these Cowboys. They're just they're, there's no quit in them. They play hard they're competing in every possession, but the problem is you're playing against the number one team in the league, and they're not quitting either. They're competing. They're hungry. Key is with position. She made up to 12 rebounds and 21 points. So, feel like you may need 30 in this game if they come back. Great block, Fryer off the front swat three, and still Cowboys basketball. Well, we said that the Islanders are going to challenge everything, and, and they do. They just don't give you anything easy. You've got to earn your way. Shoemate having to play against a bigger player now. Don't be surprised if he steps out on the floor here to try to operate. With some room to drive on keys. Double comes. He finds O'Day. He lays it in. Well, that's what he does, David. That's not surprising that he gets the chance to operate out on the floor, brings the biggest player on the floor out, and now you've got open lanes. That's great coaching by John Aiken to create a basket. Four pass. Jimmy comes away with the basketball. Drives. Charging call. Fryer was there to draw the charge. Crowd doesn't like it. They may be the eighth seed, but it's a home game for Christian. Falls for contact. You know, if you're John Aiken, you don't like that call. You're Christian Shoemate. You'd like to either play on or no call, but you don't want to get an offensive foul in that case. That's a tough call. You're, you know, you're going to argue for your team if, if, if that goes against you. Corpus Christi leads the conference in scoring, but Steve Lutz tells us when we're at our best of search with our defense, and they've held a Cowboys team that scored in the 70s the last two nights to just 48 so far with under eight to go. Terry on Murdix is foul. And by the way, I believe what Coach Lutz says because, <laughs> you know, they didn't start this game out on fire, but they did start it out on fire defensively. They, they got McNeese to turn it over. They got breakouts. I mean, they did a great job defensively. They still are. Corpus allowed 72 a game in Southland play this regular season, but in their four conference losses, they allowed 82. And Steve Lutz told us, I love this quote, we're not really good when we're full of ourselves. We get away from what makes us good when we're losing. Well, tomorrow in the association, our doubleheader starts in the Big Easy. Pelicans hosting Luka and the Mavs at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's off to the West Coast. Raptors and Clippers with coverage tipping off with NBA Countdown at 7 o'clock. By the way, I love that quote. I don't think any of us are any good when we're full of ourselves, <laughs> especially in this, today's politics. And I'll leave it at that. I won't, I won't say any more. But, but you know, uh, being humble is, is a good thing. And, and knowing who you are and, and uh, being gracious a little bit, uh, being down to earth, good qualities. Both free throws made by Murdix and his team up 12. O'Day for three. Jackson chases it down. Well, that would have been a big basket again, cut it to under double digits. That would have been a single digit deficit. That seems to be an area that you, you feel good about with McNeese if they can stay within striking distance. 
as McNeese has made its push multiple times. Got to be impressed by the Islanders' patience, bringing back just about everybody from their Southland Tournament championship team one season ago. Under five to shoot, Murdoch's with room, but way off. Massey, bump to the floor. Well, you see what Magnese is doing. They're continuing to drive it, and that's smart. This is the way that John Aiken has changed his offense. He had to do that because he's lost his point guard, his leader. And so they are now an aggressive team. They drive it. They pound the glass. This is not how they played earlier in the year. Isaac Mishila is back on the floor for purpose, so good news. Is obviously was struggling with it. It's obviously looks to be a left eye injury, band-aid just above that left eye. Well, David, you made a great point. How many teams in the country can you point to, if any, that six of your top seven players are seniors? I, I Show me one. I haven't seen that. I've never had a team like that. I've had some senior-lated teams and upper-class teams, but that's remarkable, as you mentioned, to have those seniors. That makes a difference. Corpus, the year before Steve Lutz arrived, 5-19, and 18-game turnaround last season. And 21 wins this year. No stranger to success. You know, he was part of success with Matt Painter mm -hmm. at, at uh, Purdue. And he's had some winning stops. And he's paid his dues, uh, David. He's really, he's, he's coached. You know, he's cut his teeth by getting out here and coaching a number of years now. Former assistant in the Southland, too. It's Stephen F. Austin. He's from Seguin, Texas, which is just east of San Antonio. Approaching six minutes to go. Push by Shumate. As Fryer looked to feed Mushila. Now you mentioned before Steve Lutz arrived in Corpus Christi. He was besides Matt Painter, and there's a picture of them. Four seasons, the two of them together at Mackey Arena. No, and how about Matt Painter, who many people yeah. feel could be the coach of the year. That's pretty good having him, uh, you know, as your mentor. Main reason won Zach Eady as Murdoch scores. It was Steve Lutz who recruited Zach Eady. How about that? Yeah, found him at IMG Academy and told Matt Painter and his staff, we have to go hard after this young man. Enough said. <laughs> yeah, enough said. Late double on Shoemate. Still draws the foul on Mushila. Well, he was double teamed, and the double t team took off early, and, you know, that's kind of a cardinal sin. You don't leave a double team until that player gives it up. Shoemate never gave it up. But uh, you, you can see, uh, yeah, look at uh, Coach Lutz. He's happy now. He's, you know, he, he's, uh, he's a coach's guy. He's a player's coach. Uh, I really like the, the, the progression, you know, that he's made in his coaching career as well. He's... He's really grown as a coach, too. Grew up a San Antonio Spurs fan, idolizing the Iceman, George Gervin. Well, I know a little bit about George Gervin. Actually played against him in college. Yeah. And yes, I did. Um, and How'd you also, do? Well, our team <laughs> lost. But but uh, he was pretty good. Got together with him after the game. He was pretty good after yeah. the game, too. Uh, yeah. You know, but Gerv is, is the one of the all-time greats. Eastern Michigan grad, as you know, and special, special guy. I was going to ask, how much did Gervin score on you? No, I didn't guard him. Trust me. <laughs> Doesn't matter, though. No, I was a freshman. He was upperclassman. I was just happy to be out, in the, be out there. Jalen Jackson for three. Yes. Corpus continuing to keep McNeese at just enough arm's length. Lead to 13. Well, look at the enthusiasm on that bench. That's why this team's done so well. They, they're deep. They go, they go all the way down their bench. Their whole team cheers. They've got a real, real great team concept. Got quiet tonight. In and out. And Mishila grabs the rebound. Missed the Cowboys' third game in three days. How much do they have in the tank in the final five minutes? It's a blocking foul. O'Day helped up after picking up the foul. Hey, here's, there's been a lot of it coming. So here's the injury. After that is when Murdix went to the tunnel. He's played Southland, well. Southland Conference Tournament MVP last season. Defensive player of the year in the league. Also on the offensive end, 14 points a game coming in and leading Corpus in scoring today. 
So Jalen Jackson shoots the free throws. One more coming. After that is when Murdix went to the tunnel. And you see working on his, his left leg, which, maybe not an ankle, but left calf or knee. Approaching four and a half to go. Winner of this advances to the Southland title game, 5 Eastern tomorrow, ESPN 2. New Orleans, Northwestern State, our second semifinal. <laughs> John, John, they can kind of give the official, hey, you didn't have to call that. We got just took, we got a basket out of that one. Cowboys are called for the foul, and there'll be free throws on the other end. Well, the tighter the game is called, obviously, the more that hurts McNeese with the, with a really short bench seven players we mentioned this earlier scholarship players they're down right to the really to the end and, and they just can't afford to have guys pile up with with fouls it's donovan today's fourth he goes to the bench with 430 left corpus christi is fifth in the nation in free throw percentage and their top four scorers are all great from the line tennyson 92 percent from the stripe in conference play. He'll have one more. I joke with coach today, I, and you were there. I said, look, we led the, we were third in the country in, in free throw shooting one year, and, and uh, it was my mother that got on my butt and said, hey, not a good it does you. You, you know, you don't get to the line. Uh, I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're third in percentage. you got to get to the line. His team does both, and he got a kick out of that story. But, uh, you know, when you can shoot free throws like they can, David, and there's a great move by Christian Shoemaker. Hopefully it's not too little too late, but you, you just love the fact that you know your team can get there and you convert. That's a real plus to salt games away late late in the game. Foul on the drive and more free throws coming for the Islanders with 4.05 to go. Not a lot of holes in the Islanders game. They just have so many different weapons. They play on both ends of the floor. A number of players, veteran players, leadership. You got it all. And that's why this team has won the championship and why they're buying to get into the NCAA tournament with uh, another conference championship. Yeah, Steve Lutz was effusive in his praise for Jalen Jackson when we talked to him. He was his first recruit to Corpus. Steve played with his father at Texas Lutheran University. And Jackson, 13.7 rebounds today, providing support for Terry on Murdix, who is now walking back to the corpus locker room and you can tell he is limping his way there now but jalen jackson you mentioned his accomplishment david he's 5 foot 11 let's just for not forget that and he goes up and gets rebounds he's tough he gets almost a little under two steals a game i mean he's a player steve Lutz says he draws the toughest defensive assignment every night and he has held zach scott in check and sheila call for the foul with 348 remaining Cinderella story in this tournament McNeese the eighth seed running into the top seed Corpus who's up 16 late Dumars one and another guy and then I said wait we got to adjust this let's put two guys on Dumars So might have been the first coach to use a triangle too. We went in overtime and they beat us But even to this day Joe Dumars remembers that game So I, it was one of the early games in my coaching career, but what a phenomenal player and even a better human being David Joe Dumars has done so much so you played two on Joe Dumars and decided that I didn't McNeese care. would go four on three I with the rest care. of the team. No, Joe Dumars, I could have put if I could have put three on him, I would have. You know, I'd have put a sixth man on him and taken a technical fall. I didn't care. <laughs> That's how good he was. But uh, what a phenomenal story. And your take on Joe Dumars, not only winning two championships with the Pistons, just he and Jerry West, only former NBA Finals MVPs to also win an NBA title as an executive. That tells it all. And, and you know, he's beloved by his teammates. Isaiah Thomas speaks highly of Joe Dumars. They were quite a duo and one of the two best guard duos in the history of the game, Dumars and Thomas. Fryer gets the block and... Yeah, the Cowboys will still be one of the great stories of this tournament But how impressed have you been by these Islanders because here a road game for Corpus many times McNeese try to make a run and obviously the Islanders and answer every now, time. You can't pencil this game in David You've got to play this game and they they were getting McNeese at a really tough time when McNeese was playing at their best And that's a credit to give John Aiken credit. You know, he's He's a guy that's talked uh, openly about having second chances in his life and boy, he's making use of them Bucket to put McNeese within 18. 
Now they're they're uh, they're just battling, and you know this is gonna, you know they may not come back and get this game, but I tell you this, they can they can build this for the future. Uh, it's important if you're a coach, you want to take as many silver linings as you can. Well, and, and this team, McNeese, this year, really an example of a second chance because of what happened in the regular season finale. They rallied from 13 down to win. Lamar and Incarnate were lost. They got McNeese here and being able to get to the semifinals, a good sign for this program. A number of their players so young. But well, De Lazarus Keys has had 16 now. No, he's played really well. And if you're, again, you're McNeese, the one team you really don't want to play if you're shorthanded is, is Corpus Christi. They're just so good, David. And, you know, to play a team with this energy and the depth, and uh, that's a tall order. But but the Islanders have really dominated in the interior. You know, look how many points they've had in the paint. 40-plus, David. That's that's getting it done. And, and it's not like it's easy to go inside against McNeese. But, you know, smart is your game plan. Let's try to get points there. Wow, that's a big number. 46 of the 76 points in the paint and that's not just keys that's Murdoch's for example being able to get to the rim But they do this against everybody They're, you know, it doesn't matter who they play. That's their game plan It's you know, it's kind of good old-fashioned smash mouth basketball But you know if you want to win uh, you got to go inside you got to play where it's where it's a little bit uh, Dicey and it's tough and you know, there's been a couple guys tonight that have gotten banged up in there But you know if you want to win you got to you got to be able to take some pounding and and, and you know take some punishment Kirsten Shue made 77 points in the Cowboys' three games. They break the pressure. Keys the slam dunk. Corpus Christi will look for back-to-back -back Southland Tournament Championships tomorrow. Friar to the line, or rather, it is Shue made to the line after the Friar fell. Well, we got another injury, too, David. It might, you hope, it's just a cramp. You know, you hope it's just a cramp late in the game. Uh, that is DeLazarus Keys, who has scored so many points in the paint. Now he has to go to the title to be tended to. And as you said, hopefully just a cramp. This is a season high for Keys today with his 18 points. Well, you, you know, if it's a cramp, you'd think it's McNeese that's going to get cramped up with all the minutes they've logged. But, you know, you also, we said this, your Corpus Christi, you have not played in six days, and your practice schedule is a little different. So you're, you know, you're prone to uh, having, you're not in the same rhythm. And, you know, that's what happens, you know, when you go up for the dunk and he comes down, and it just looks like it's a cramp. It's yeah. like, whoa. And hopefully that is the case. And good news for Corpus, by the way, Terry on Murdix is back on the bench and sitting next to the coaching staff. Of course, he doesn't need to check back in, even if he could, with 134 to go and his team comfortably ahead. But there's now DeLazarus Keys on the trainer's table. Now, it's been a hard-fought game. You know, you've got to give the Islanders credit after the layoff. They're back here. They're showing you why they are the number one seed in this tournament and why they're the team to beat. Frankly, you're going to have to beat them. I don't think they're going to beat themselves. And those are the toughest teams to play. A, you know, a team that might... You know, you know, shoot themselves out of a game. Okay, but this team plays both ends of the floor. Our second semifinal is going to be awfully interesting. It is two versus seven, but it's a New Orleans team, the seven seed, that is winners of six of their last seven. That after a nine-game losing streak, but they got their point guard Jordan Johnson back, who has been lights out since, especially in this tournament. And so, don't think two versus seven should be one-sided like this has become. What do you think of New Orleans' chances to pull well, off the victory? How about Coach Mark Schlesinger, what he's done? How many teams can do that, lose the games they did, and come back and put a six-game win streak together? Massey scores. That second game streamed on ESPN Plus, tip at approximately 9 o'clock Eastern time. Well, and a Northwestern State team, the two-seed, and Corey Gibson, a remarkable turnaround that the Demons have had in his first season in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Over 20 wins, and looking for their first Southland title appearance in quite some time. Now, I'm looking forward to that game.
102 to go in our first Southland semifinal, 78-61. Texas A&M Corpus Christi over McNeese will be the Islanders in the title game tomorrow. And they're trying to be the first top seed to win this tournament since 2017 when New Orleans won. In fact, they defeated Corpus in overtime in the title game. Lowest seed to win was just last year. Corpus as a four seed. Back in 2022. Now, uh, caveat to that, that was since we've been in this tournament format, which has been for the last 10 years, where the top two seeds get double buys to the semis. Seeds three and four get a single buy to the second round. Well, that, that's a telling sign, though, David. And if that's the case, that doesn't make it any easier for Corpus Christi. But I like how they're playing. You know, they, they seem to focus on how they're playing, not who they're playing. So I don't think it's going to make a difference you know necessarily but uh, just they, they're in a rhythm they're playing well and you want to continue that and hopefully they're they won't have injuries and they'll be healthy going into the final Donovan O'Day just fouled out and Ross Williams at the line and a, a big hand for Harlan Francois senior who comes out Number of Cowboys fans here expressing their approval for the McNeese seniors and Isaac Mishila to the bench to a hand from the Islander supporters behind him. Now, I love seniors. You know, you, I love crowds and home crowds giving their seniors their due. They, they, they've done so much for their team, their community, their university. Of course, used to be, of course, when you were a senior, you knew it would be your last game if you were to lose a conference tournament matchup. But here, both teams have been a number of seniors. Uh, we're not sure who will come back, but they're all eligible to come back if yeah. they choose. Man, that's changed. You know, things have changed over the last couple of years. There you see seniors coming back and playing a, an additional year. And I think that's great to give players a chance to come back, extend their careers. I've always felt inclusion, not exclusion, make it possible you know, to help student-athletes, and, and, and that's the right decision. Christian Shoemate looking for his 30th point. He has 15 rebounds. But the story, Corpus able to hold down his teammates in this victory. Now, great effort. Uh, from start to finish, they've, they've defended. They've battled. I think their attitude has been good. Uh, they've taken a couple good punches from McNeese. And you know they're they're gonna they're gonna know they were in a battle, but uh, they're gonna go back and get a little rest to see if they can gear up. But that's a big win. This nothing you know nothing's given, and you got to earn the championship. And they earned it tonight. Our title game tomorrow, five Eastern ESPN two. We know Texas A&M Corpus Christi will be there. They'll take on either Northwestern State or New Orleans. That will tip about 25 minutes after we're done here, streaming live on ESPN Plus. Well, 80 to 63, Texas A&M Corpus Christi moves on to the Southland Conference Championship game. Steve Lutz and his Islanders, one one away from back-to-back -back conference tournament titles. Northwestern State or New Orleans will look to stand in their way tomorrow. That is our second semifinal matchup. Those two teams split the regular season series.